Hey, I'm Geek Pastimes, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix your frames per second, your FPS in Halo Infinite on PC. The game shadow dropped yesterday. It was super exciting. I had an absolute blast of it. But when I loaded it up on PC, as soon as I loaded it up and started playing, I could tell there was something not right. Like the frame rate wasn't quite right. It was running quite slow. My PC is pretty powerful. Like I've got a 3080 in there, and I was really shocked at the performance. But thankfully, there's a really easy way to fix it. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video video now obviously the usual disclaimers apply everyone's got different systems everyone's going to have different settings i'll show you all of mine and what i'm running right now to let you know but if you've got a less powerful system you might want to turn some of the details down always make sure your drives are updated i think there's an amd driver update that has a specific thing for halo infinite in it so that's definitely worth getting i'm assuming nvidia will have something within the next few days so make sure you keep the drives updated because that's always going to help you and help you to avoid different problems if you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other halo videos i've got a couple like the unboxing of the Halo Infinite Xbox Series X and the Elite controller from yesterday. I did a video looking back at the other Halo games and what they mean to me. Definitely worth checking out and subscribe and turn your notifications on. So basically this is Halo Infinite running. I'm actually running the Steam version at the moment but all of this stuff applies whether you're running the Windows Store version or the Steam version. Because it's free to play you can kind of install it wherever and I quite like the way Steam does its updates so that's why I'm running it on there. Now whenever you're customizing anything on PC you can just tap F1 to get into the control panel. There's a ton of options in this game and some of them aren't that obvious actually. There's quite a lot of options that aren't the same as in other games and part of that is to do with this all running natively on DirectX 12. There's lots of other games like Battlefield 2042 for example that have a DirectX 12 mode but this game is just running on DirectX 12 and that changes a few things. One of them that actually 343 have talked about is the fact that you should be always just running this in full screen borderless window not just full screen exclusive um, and I'm, I'm not even sure if there's an option for a full screen exclusive thing so you can see there it's running at borderless full screen uh, or you can do it in a resizable window. There's an option for full screen. In previous games, that would make like a little bit of a hit on your frames per second, a bit of a hit on a performance. But in DirectX 12, it literally makes no difference. So you'll be running at whatever. So I'll quickly go down the options, but I'll talk about the most important ones when we get to them. First of all, field of view. I would recommend moving it up a little bit. Obviously, the higher you move it up, there is going to be some sort of performance hit to it. But most people prefer something like 90 to even 120. Some people like it as. So it's worth moving that up a little bit. It'll make the game feel a little bit faster and it'll help you to see things in your peripheral vision a little bit more double check your display adapter is your actual graphics card that's something i've seen a couple of people complain about when they've gone here and then they found that they're accidentally using like integrated graphics or something like that make sure you know it should be but just double check that your display adapter is actually the thing that you want to be using and obviously that the monitor is the right one and then your resolution scale you can choose here obviously it's going to be full screen whatever but your resolution scale like in other games is going to make quite a big difference if you don't care about how it looks too much but you want like the very like the very fastest um performance out of anything you can whack that down to 1080p or you can put it up to 4k if you've got a monitor that supports it i would say it's always better to try and go for the native resolution of your monitor mine's 1440p so it's set to 2560 by 1440. now these two are the big ones these are the really really important settings that you don't often see in other games but you need to make sure you get these ones right. So your minimum frame rate should be set to 60. You can set it to lots of other things. You can turn it off. You can put it 24, 30, 40. You can even have it up to the refresh rate of your monitor. I would strongly suggest you leave it at 60. By default, this was on 30 for me, and I think this is the thing that was causing the most problems. For some reason, if you leave it off, then the frame rate still bounces around all over the place. If you have it to 30, even though it's just a minimum, it seems like the game does use that quite a lot, so it drops down to 30. I'm not sure if it's adding in some extra effects somewhere else or whatever's happening, but keep that on 60 and you'll have a much, much better experience. The maximum frame rate should be set to the refresh rate of your monitor. So whatever it is that you have Windows running at, make sure you've got that set to your maximum frame rate. Obviously, you can drop that down if you've got a specific reason to, like you're recording video at a certain frame rate or something like that. I have it set to 120 because it's a multiple of 60, which I always think in my head makes it a bit better for when I'm streaming and recording stuff at 60 frames a second. Not sure if that's true, but that's just how I think. 
So make sure your maximum frame rate is whatever you want it to refresh at and your minimum frame rate is set to 60. It's going to make a big difference and that's the thing that made my game run so much smoother. Then you have V-Sync. V-Sync's a really interesting one on this. Um, if you have V-Sync on, like in any game, it's going to add a tiny bit of input lag. I personally don't find it particularly noticeable because I'm not like the best at Halo and I'm using a controller anyway, so I'm not noticing it, but some people might. If I turn it off, I get quite bad screen tearing on this. And, you know, to the point where people who are watching my stream notice the screen tearing. So I would leave VSync on personally, like for me, but that's not so much of a performance thing. It's much more kind of, do you want screen tearing or do you want a little bit of input lag? I've gone for the input lag, but it's up to you. Limit inactive frame rate. This really is just if you're someone who alt tabs out a lot, does other stuff while you've still got the game running in the background, it's probably worth putting that on and then it will um, just make sure that the game isn't using too many resources when it's just in the background and you can't see it anyway. So you can put that on. It doesn't really make much difference. It doesn't matter too much. Now, for the graphics, all of these seem like you can leave them pretty high and they're not going to cause too many problems so a lot of them only have settings like they only go low medium high ultra or some of them only go low and high i had by default everything on high and i think the game looks great and it plays great generally with pc games i find uh, putting it on ultra doesn't make that much difference to the way it looks but can sometimes have quite a profound effect there's a few things on here like the effects quality um and you know some things like the volumetric fog and lighting quality and shadow quality where if there's a lot of stuff going on on screen that might hit your frame rate when you're just wandering around normally it'll probably all be fine but those things might affect your frame rate so you can play around with these to make it like set to whatever you want but i found on a 3080 everything being a high I can get generally about 120 frames a second without any problems running at 2k so running at 1440p if that helps you for the sensory stuff this is all stuff that doesn't really affect your frame rate at all but it does affect your sort of experience of the game so blur I would leave to zero and this actually is one of the first games I've played for a long while where the default was on zero for the blur so like it says there this isn't just like motion blur for looking around it's actually radial blur for stuff like explosion sprinting equipment use and cinematic sequences so sometimes there's kind of a blur effect to make you feel like you're going faster um i personally don't like that because any kind of blur effect is kind of annoying so i turn it off screen shake on the other hand is when there's like an explosion near you it will shake the screen a little bit i personally like that i think it's quite immersive i think it kind of makes moments feel more exciting if you were a really competitive gamer i would turn that off because obviously it's going to be a little bit distracting but i find it like like that's a fun effect that's a good effect so i leave it on exposure is to do with the intensity of effects like how bright things get personally i don't see a reason not to leave that on 100 percent otherwise things look weirdly muted like especially explosions and fire so i would leave that off there's lots of very cool plasma effects in halo so i think it's a good idea to leave that on full and then full screen effects like the shield recharge or equipment use i would definitely leave that on 100 percent because there's actually some information given to you on that so things like when your shield has come back there is obviously an audio cue as well so you can turn it off if you want but i found it it's not too obtrusive at all and i think it's very very useful then the speed lines is something that when you're sprinting it just has some little lines around the edge almost like an anime i think that's kind of cool again i quite like it but you could turn it off if it really bothered you sharpening is a really interesting one so it says there set the crispness of edges and texture details this isn't like the same kind of sharpening that you normally have on your tv where people nearly always turn it right down to zero or to like put it on like five out of a hundred or something just to make sure it's not too blurry um this is something that actually seems to be on the edge of objects now it starts off on 60 percent i think if you put it down to like maybe 30 or even 20 it probably looks a little bit better it makes it like a tiny bit sharper but it's not going to make a huge difference to you so again like a lot of these things it's personal choice so all of those settings with for me this helps me to run it at 120 frames a second and i'm streaming and everything like that and it looks really really good this has worked for me let me know in the comments if it works for you now there are some other settings that you can mess around with in game that are really just down to preference they're not down to frame rate or anything like that so if you hop on over to ui you can do loads of different things here to change kind of your experience in the game so things like turning the hood on or off completely how transparent it is with opacity whether you want text chat to display at all because if you're someone who never uses text chat you can get rid of it i personally leave it on because i like some of the funny random messages that people leave in here 
The horizontal display margin, you can choose whether you actually want it to go all the way to the edges because sometimes, you know, if you've got an ultra wide monitor, for example, you might want it to stay more central. Or maybe you've even got like a situation where the TV, there's something kind of in the way. You know, you've got a plant or something that's sometimes a little bit in the way, so you want to move it a little bit. That's absolutely fine. Same for vertical. You can choose how you display the scoreboard. Do you want to tap it or do you want to... Um, do you want to put it on hold and release which means like when you hold it it'll appear then as soon as you let go it disappears i quite like that actually i'm gonna put that back on i had it on before and it was good there's a frames per second counter this in the ui section so if you want to see what your frame rate is i quite like leaving it up and if you put network statistics on it will also tell you the um ping to the server that you're on so it'll say zero milliseconds when you're just like in the menu so when you get in the game it'll tell you that so that's kind of useful to tell if there's something going on especially when you're trying to work out how to make the game feel responsive it's handy to know whether it's like a lag problem or whether it's a performance problem so that's probably worth putting on when you're trying stuff out Personally, I leave that off most of the time. And then you can also do things like changing all the colors of everything, how much it shows in terms of like, do you want to see the enemy names or do you just want to see the tags and the outline and stuff like that? Do you want chromatic aberration, bloom and parallax? Now, this isn't for the main game. This is all just for the heads up display. This is just for the UI. So do you want the UI to kind of glow a little bit? Do you want it to be able to move, like have a little bit of depth to it? If you don't want it to glow, you can turn the bloom off and a chromatic vibration. If you don't want it to kind of look 3D, you can turn the parallax off. I think all of those things are very, very cool personally. Then there's a load of stuff that's just for observing. This is a very cool thing you can actually choose for different types of weapons like melee weapons pistols rifles heavy weapons where you want the gun to be on the screen so you can change the horizontal offset you can kind of move it to one side this was something we actually saw in the master chief collection and a lot of people really like it you can make it so the gun is maybe off the screen a bit so it doesn't cover up as much of your screen so you can see more or you could even make it so maybe if you're left-handed and you're more used to like having stuff on that side of your body you could make it so it looks like it's on that side you can move the horizontal offset all the way to one side so if you want to change that kind of thing you can do there's tons of options in halo infinite i think i'm just scratching the surface with a lot of this stuff but if you enjoy this if you found this a useful guide if you found it useful to change some of your settings like i said make sure you change that minimum frame rate because that is the key one that's the most important one let me know in the comments leave a like on the video and maybe subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff and more videos about halo infinite thank you very much for watching and goodbye